I think I might have scared uh, this uh, <laughs> this sheriff out in Nye County, Nevada. Uh, emailed him. I'm looking forward to interviewing you this Thursday, 4 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Your Time. I got an email back. Uh, that time has already been booked. Sorry. I emailed him back. How about Friday, same time? Uh, at a work conference all week, and cell phones have a way of dropping signals. And I just emailed him back. Uh, okay, Thursday, Friday of next week. Emails me back. Uh, that was for next week. Last week in August, first week of September looks okay. What? How busy can a guy be that's a county sheriff of Nye County, Nevada? I got to wait three weeks to interview this guy? I think I scared him off uh, by telling him, you know, you came from the uh, the corporate Keystone Coffer cops. You were a policy enforcer if you were a street cop. And there is a difference between police departments and county sheriffs. You're the only elected guy. And, man, I just couldn't take my eyes off of those four stars on his collar. You know, what the hell is that all about? Uh, anybody else notice that out there? County sheriffs starting to wear the garb that the police chiefs are? Military-style command? Uh, what's the county sheriff? Did he, did he have an armband on? Uh, I didn't notice if he had an armband on. Why? Are you talking about a Nazi insignia or something? Could be. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to work on this guy real hard. Uh, real hard. Uh, because I'll tell you what, I'm tired of the phony baloney people that won't stand up for the law. And, hell, I might go out there and campaign against the guy. I might become the county sheriff of, well, I, I don't necessarily like Nevada that much. But maybe we'll run somebody against him. At any rate, back to the phones. Tony in Wisconsin. Hello, Tony. Hi. Hey, this is uh, real fun. Uh, I started listening to are you on a speaker? Oh, oh, Tony, are you on a speaker? No, I'm on a headset. Okay, you're on Skype. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Okay, you're sounding rather crappy. You got a hard line? Uh, I do. Okay, call that toll-free number back on the hard line if you would, please, sir. Okay. Because that sounds really bad. Let's go to Terry. In uh, the meantime, Terry in Texas. Hello, Terry. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi. I only have one. I have many questions, but I'm going to just keep it to one, and it's for uh, Robbie. And it's uh, I haven't had a chance to listen to Robbie's program here in release in the last couple of months, and I don't know if that question was ever addressed to him, so curiosity is killing the cat. I'm assuming Robbie's got his Daga already picked out in Rhodesia. If he knows, I'm sure he knows. You know what a Daga is, don't you? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> no, he's talking. He's talking about a uh, uh, a place to live. Exactly. In one of the round huts with the dirt floor, oh, like yeah. they had in uh, outside in the TTL. I can't wait to see him with a ring in his nose myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it, uh, uh, Mr. Chapman had it right. It's a mud hut. Um. Well, my question for you, Robbie, which has got me very, very curious, because I understand you're going back to Zimbabwe. How are you getting your sock drawer out of the country? Oh, it's already done. Okay. Yeah, it's a very simple process. Yeah, and carry a pigeon. You know, he and 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 uh, Terry, he he couldn't wait for this gold to move. I, I would have much preferred him before he sold off and wired and did, did all that other stuff uh, to stick around to see the fruition of what he's been telling people for many many years. Hmm. Well, it's a very simple process. Uh, gold goldmoney.com. Um, you just simply sold uh, sold the physical, converted it to goldmoney.com. And they give you gold back? If you want to take delivery. Are you going to take delivery? No, because it's in 400-ounce bars, and I'm not even close. Uh, 100, 400-ounce bars? No, it's 400. <laughs> delivery, delivery from Gold Buddy is either... How down. much money do you think he stuffed in his stock, yeah. his sock yeah. drawer there, Bob? Uh, gold, money, well, gold Money delivery I have my is, ways of knowing. 
Ah. Gold Money's uh, the delivery system is a thousand ounce Comex bars or a four hundred ounce uh, good delivery bars. Mm. So that all can be tr transacted in Rhodesia. It can be transacted <laughs> anywhere in the world. As long as, as long as they have internet. Yes. What about your What about your tax liability on that? Well, I pay my taxes. I'm not going to pay taxes twice on it. You might have to talk to the Zimbabwe officials about that one. Well, the money's not in Zimbabwe. It's on a little island off the coast of England. Oh, I thought you were going to tell, tell me it was Madagascar. No. Oh, okay. It's Guernsey. Guernsey? Bob knows it well. And it's cold and miserable, and it's one of the worst flights in the world flying in there, either to Jersey or Guernsey, and you better have a strong stomach. Well, James Turk doesn't live in Guernsey. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with Madagascar, by the way? Madagascar, Nothing, well, nothing. unless you don't. You like the Indian Ocean. Well, I mean, I, look, it, make, it makes my skin crawl. The fact, the mere fact, Bob, that this guy is going back to Zimbabwe to begin with. This isn't exactly like stable. Going back to over. South Africa, you know. You keep on mixing it. It's it's like yeah, someone you keep saying. Keep on I'm, mixing it. That's yeah. a misnomer. Wait a minute. It's Wait like a, it's this. like saying someone's going back to Texas. Meanwhile, they're going back to California. Well, wait, no, no, I don't understand. Oh. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, now you're getting yourself wait a minute. Deeper. Pot everybody down here. <laughs> Hold on here. You mean to tell me? That when you say Zimbabwe, that is his own separate country, you just transfix that and transmute it to South Africa? Yeah, I've, I've always lived in Jeffreys Bay. You may not know this, but Zimbabwe is uh, a landlocked country. Yeah, I know. Uh, Jeffreys Bay is on the coast, on the Indian Ocean. So you're, okay, all right, now I'm really confused. Are you going back to Zimbabwe, the country? Are you going to this Bay Area that doesn't have anything to do with Zimbabwe? Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> God, it only took how many weeks to work that one out? Gosh. All right, Tony, anything else, sir? Terry. I'm sorry? Terry. I'm sorry, Terry. Not My mistake. I have a quick, one other point. I, I, you have other callers and more important I ran in, this was at a function many, many years ago. Um, that I talk, Now, Robbie has talked a lot about his love of horses, and this just came out of the blue, out of the recess of my brain about an hour ago, remembering having this long discussion with this woman about uh, the sort of the history or lore of horse, horses and horseback riding in Rhodesia, and now I um, see why... After having this conversation with this woman, now I see where and whence um, Robbie's love of horses. Because I guess horse, having horses and horse racing, I think, was quite big in Rhodesia at one time. Is that not right, Robbie? Well, sure. I live right near there in Greystone Park. Park. Yeah. Yeah. I used to go to the track every Saturday. It was one of the few things to do there. Had, and Robbie would be standing there drinking his mainstay. <laughs> Rob, hey, you know what happened to the rest of his gold, Bob? Robbie tried to open up a racetrack out in Arizona, but the damn horses kept dying. <laughs> any rate, Terry, thank you for hey, your call. You. Robbie, tell him about mainstay. Well, mainstay is it's rot gut stuff, Bob. Well, it's 150 proof alcohol. Well, I know. I mean, and they, they pour it in with drinks to make them stronger. You have two of the two of them, and you're zonked. You know, I went, the first time I ever went to Vegas, and I had only been there, I think, twice. You know, it wasn't until the second time. Uh, cocktail waitresses kept coming around and wanting to wanted me to place an order for a drink, and I'd say no, thank you, and I'd go up to the bar and I'd pay for it. And, and it didn't dawn on me till the second time around that drunk people get sloppy and they lose more money. I didn't know that that was the game. Shows how naive I am. And they don't put 150 proof anything in their drinks out there. If anything, they're watered down, but they'll keep shoving them at you. That's for sure. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it, Terry. Let's go to Jasper in Massachusetts. Hello, Jasper. Watertown. <laughs> Jasper, are you there? I am. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Bob. Hi there. Um, 
Uh, first of all, I have a, uh, a great quote from Thomas Jefferson that I'd never heard before today, and uh, I think you'll all appreciate it. It goes, uh, nothing can now be believed what is seen in the newspaper. Truth itself becomes suspicious by being put into that polluted vehicle. The real extent of this state of disinformation is known only to those who are in situations to confront facts within their knowledge with the lies of the day. So, basically saying, newspapers are totally unreliable already, and it's only 1807. Yeah. Couldn't agree so, more. Jasper, anything else? Yeah, I was, I was wondering uh, what each of your uh, personal feelings are about um, capital punishment. Hmm. And I ask you, because I, I see you guys all as role models, you know, in one way or another. 